Hello everyone and welcome to our podcast series in the classical political economy tradition by the Vincent Center for the Public Understanding of Economics and Entrepreneurship at the University of Buckingham. The Vincent Center runs a series of programs in economics and related fields designed to promote a wider understanding of classical liberal economics and how markets, trade and entrepreneurship promote welfare in a free society. I'm Dr. Juan Castañeda, director of the Vincent Center, and today we'll be hosting Len Shackleton. Len is a professor of economics at the University of Buckingham since 2011 and senior research and editorial fellow at the Institute of Economic Affairs. He was previously dean of the Royal Docks Business School at the University of East London and prior to that dean of the Westminster Business School. He has also taught at Kew Mary, University of London, and worked as an economist in the civil service. His research interests are primarily in labour economics. He is the editor of Economic Affairs, which is co-published by the IA, the Institute of Economic Affairs, uh, the University of Buckingham, in collaboration with Asperdias University and Francisco Marroquin University. Len, for more than 40 years, Economic Affairs has published original work by hundreds of authors, broadly sharing a classical liberal political economy approach to the understanding of economics. It was founded by Arthur Seldon at the IA in 1980. Can you please tell us more about the history of the journal? Okay, well, Arthur Seldon, of course, was a leading figure, the leading figure, possibly, in, in the uh, genesis of uh, the Institute of Economic Affairs. And he was a scrupulous editor, both of uh, books and of journal articles, as I knew to my cost when I first submitted an article to him in about 1982 or something of that uh, order. Yeah, uh, in, in the, uh, the first uh, issue of the journal, which was then called the Journal of Economic Affairs, we, it's now just Economic Affairs, uh, he said it was being created to provide an opportunity for economists and others who are authoritative on the workings of markets to analyse events more promptly and crisply than is possible in IEA papers, but with the same detachment and independence of political impossibility or other prejudgments. Well, the world has changed since uh, in the 40-odd years since then. Um, the, the, the question of the timeliness of material, etc., has been overtaken by events. I mean, now we publish blogs and, and uh, website pieces daily. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the purpose of the journal has inevitably changed. Um, it's been through many iterations. As you know, we're looking through back copies of it. And at one time it was a, a magazine which was actually sold, I remember it being sold on bookstores like WH Smith's. That has gone. Um, we took the decision in uh, 2013 to turn it into a, a fully fledged academic journal um, uh, in a standard A5 format. Um, it's now an international journal. The, the subhead of it is now um, Economic Affairs, an, an international journal of liberal political economy. And that's the way I see it. It's international. Um, Three quarters of our readership is, is outside the UK, which was certainly not the case when Arthur Seldon set the thing up. But it's now very much an international journal. Okay, very interesting. I mean, in, in recent years, the vast majority of um, academic publications, at least in economics, have become much more specialised and also very much focused on statistical or and mathematical uh, methods. This has produced a growing number of uh, papers that are becoming more and more difficult to read, in my opinion, by non-specialists and yet an interested audience in, in the topics. How would you assess this trend in the academic journals uh, market and how different economic affairs approach is? The, uh, the, the academic journal market is changing very rapidly with the advent of open access and uh, the, really, a lot of journals now don't have an identity. They are simply a, a convenient framework, historical framework for publishing papers, uh, which, you know, the imperatives of modern academic life in, in the UK, things like the research assessment exercise, uh, are to get your paper out there as quickly as possible. I think we've stood a little way back from that in economic affairs. We're tr still trying to produce a, a journal, which is a kind of, body of work, uh, each issue, which would be of interest to a wide readership, not just to 
a narrow specialist group who are searching by keyword and, and whatever. I mean, we obviously have to help that group facilitate search and, and, and so forth. But I still see the journal editor as, as being somebody who creates a, you know, a, a full meal rather than a series of discrete, discrete courses. And, and you know, it, it's something which I, I think uh, is, is being lost in the world of academic journals. And how about uh, the current uh, focus on, on methods? Is that oh. something we, or methods, on statistical, mathematical okay, methods? Okay, well, uh, Arthur Selden, uh, you know, who, who, as we say, started this thing, was very keen on the idea of being able to translate virtually anything into English words. And we don't, uh, we don't totally eschew um, um, mathematical material. Indeed, each issue probably contains two or three articles which are very largely conometric. Um, but, you know, we do insist on it being presented in such a way that, that readers can grab the main conclusions of it and some insight into the methodology without having to plough through page after page after page after page of printout, which is what a lot of journal articles consist of. Mm -hmm. Well, you've told us already a, a bit about how international the audience of the journal is now as compared to mm. uh, in the... Uh, at the beginning of uh, you know the establishment of the journal, but can you tell us a bit more about uh, the the type of audience, whether it's just mainly academics or professional economists interested in our, in our articles? I think probably a, a lot of the downloads are on the system are by professional economists, but the journal does have a, 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 has a physical circulation. And also, of course, is available as an entity on, 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 on uh, the Wiley website for subscribers. Um, I think it, 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 it is a, a, a thing which uh, a, a number of different audiences can read. We know, you know, our, our subscribers, the people who read it, include politicians, they include uh, policy wonks, you know, hmm. people in think tanks and, and so on, journalists. We get a lot of interest from media people. Um, uh, and newspapers, you know, newspaper journalists pick stuff up as well. We, we regularly get articles quoted. Um, so I think we're, we're trying to appeal to a, a, a wider audience than simply the narrow specialist economists. There are far too many of those people. Uh, another criticism that I would, uh, I would make to, to the current trend in academic journals, at least in economics, is their growing detachment from... Uh, how could I put it, uh, day-to-day economic issues. Uh, which are the topics economic affairs usually features? Right, well, we, we, have, uh, you know, we have a number of different types of article which we publish. Um, there are the three standing original articles which are based often on, on, uh, on new research, new data, or maybe a, a, a new interpretation of classic texts. I mean, we've recently uh, published uh, an interesting two-parter on uh, David Hume's uh, uh, approach to slavery and, and racism, which I think is a very interesting area. Um, but that's, you know, that is, that is sort of deep research of texts and so forth, whereas other articles are, are, are really about, uh, for example, um, uh, material about pension schemes in the latest issue, um, about the uh, ability of central banks to control inflation. These are, uh, you know, there's a range of issues. So those are the kind of things we have in the original article section. We also uh, typically have a discussion section, which are, are meant to be more provocative pieces based in research, based in scholarship, but which are, are trying to make a point of some kind. Uh, and those are shorter. Uh, those are shorter, yeah. Um, I, I mean, in, in the most recent issue, we have a, a very interesting article by Jamie White, Dr. Jamie White, where he's talking about um, the, you know, what has been called post-liberal thought uh, amongst conservative writers, and, uh, and, and Jamie, in characteristic style, debunks this, and that was a very interesting piece of, of, of rhetoric, but based in, in, in analysis and, and reason. Uh, we also, uh, in each issue, have at least one long review article where what we ask the authors to do here is to take a, a book or, or, or books, recent, uh, recent publications, which are then um, the basis for writing a longer piece 
on uh, how those new, 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 new um, publications relate to a field, uh, to an area of study, to a, a political uh, area, or whatever it may be. Uh, and so those, those turn out to be uh, th you know, really kind of, kind of thoughtful pieces which relate uh, new authors to uh, old themes, if you like. Um, and uh, finally, we, we, you know, a very popular section is book reviews. Book reviews, I think, have been uh, neglected in a lot of journals recently. They used to be a major feature of academic journals, but we continue that tradition and we uh, ask uh, people to take seriously new books and to, to say something useful about them rather than simply what's on page 364. That's right, yeah. Well, uh, the Journal of Economic Affairs is one of the few, I would say... Uh, can I just correct you? It is now called Economic Affairs. Oh, you couldn't <laughs> be more right. <laughs> so, Economic Affairs is one of the few, if not the only one in Europe, I would say, uh, following a, a, we can call a classical liberal political economy approach. Um, how relevant this approach is to the understanding of economics? Uh, well, political economy, I think, is, is a very broad church. And... Uh, you know, we, we publish a lot of work um, by some of the classical figures like Hayek and so forth. But I, I you know, the, this isn't a, an exclusive club. We could, you know, anything which is in the, the general area of political economy, you can approach that from a number of different perspectives. And I think, you know, we are not a, a we, we're not a cult. Yeah. We're, you know, no, we're not. <laughs> We do, we do try to, to draw in a lot of people, and I, I would encourage anybody who's got thoughts on the general area of political, political economy to submit material. We're always looking for new, provocative authors with something to say. So, any advice to a young scholar thinking of submitting a paper to an economics journal? It doesn't need to be economic affairs. No, well, you, you, you know, I think you do have to be aware of uh, who you're talking to. Um, this is something which uh, uh, I think a lot of uh, young scholars find it very difficult to grasp uh, because their main experience has been writing a PhD or a similar thing for external examiners who want every conceivable base covered. And what you're trying to do here in a PhD is to prove your, uh, you know, your bona fides for, for, for an academic career. And covering, covering all the bases, your expertise and so forth. But they, somebody who wants to read an article in a journal is not interested in all that stuff. What they're interested in is your core message, how you go about doing this thing, and the way in which you present conclusions which have some kind of relevance to the world we live in, whether they be... Uh, you know, uh, uh, our, our understanding of, of economic phenomena or, uh, very importantly, of policy, uh, policy implications of work and, and, you know, how we can improve the political economy which we inhabit. Yeah, that certainly is something that Economic Affairs does. Um, well, thank you very much, uh, Len, for joining us today. If you want to know more about the, the, uh, this journal, Economic Affairs, and how to submit a paper, you can access the journal's page online, on Wiley's uh, 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 page, or visit the Wilson Center's website. You will find uh, information there too. Thank you all very much for listening. Thank you all very much for listening. This podcast is edited by the Vinson Centre at the University of Buckingham. You can visit our website at vinsoncentre.com to access our podcast series and know more about the programmes and events we host, both in Buckingham and in London. Please subscribe to our newsletter if you want to receive timely information on the Vinson Centre's agenda.